Hey everyone, it's Maury Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studio. It is Thursday, our thrifty Thursday. And I got to turn the notifications off when they come on now. Uh, you're catching me completely bare face today. None of my usual makeup and all that drama. Sorry, I've had a mask on too many times recently. It started to irritate my skin, so uh, I left everything off for the day. No makeup, no masks, no nothing, and I'm not going near anybody. I'm here by myself in the studio. All right, we are still open for business, so, and my front door is wide open, so you may hear road traffic. We may have people stick their head in if they want to come and join the live. Nobody's been brave enough to come in and join one of my lives yet, but I am hoping for that day. Oh, hi, Ashley. Nice to see you. So um, I'm sort of theming the days of the week, and I write notes now, too, because I never remember anything. So really what we're going to go work on right now, we have had Transformation Tuesday, work it out Wednesday, because why? I had to work out a problem. I didn't know how to do something. So that's what work it out Wednesdays are about. Thrifty Thursdays are inexpensive projects. Uh, free finish Friday. Well, tomorrow is free finish Friday. Free finish Friday means I will have created a finish that I will be doing a whole live and that is a full finish. I'm not gonna, I will put all the information for the products in. I'm not gonna write out the directions, folks. You're gonna be watching the video, that's on you. Uh, and then Saturday is going to be sexy Saturday. So we're going to create something fabulous on Saturday. Now it is thrifty Thursday or thirsty Thursday. Yes, I'm thirsty too. So now I'm having a sip. Mm, iced tea. Sorry. Stop by the paper sources, uh, warehouse sale this morning and picked up these killer iridescent disco skulls. Why? Because my nephew is in town today and I'm very excited about that. I haven't seen him in six months and he came to spend two weeks with me. So you might see him in the backgrounds of some lives. You might see him wandering around. You might hear the voice in the background saying, Mo, 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 because they call me Momo. My niece and nephew call me Momo. So you might hear Mo, Mo, Mo in the background. Um, I'm gonna swing the camera over. If you look over this way, you can see I still have those cups from Work It Out Wednesday yesterday on the turner. And I'll tell you why. Uh, we'll complete that and then we'll move on to today's project. Yesterday I did these turners and I, I mixed colored epoxies, splotched it on, poured it on, dribbled it on, maneuvered it in the heat. Well, what happened actually, uh, and I'm gonna zoom you in here, is my power went out last night. We had rainstorms and my power went out and everything, it was, I look at it from where the timer stopped working. The timer probably shut off around eight o'clock last night. And I'd only had the cups turning on the turners for a couple hours at that point. So everything dribbled down and I had all these little dribble spots underneath. So this morning I came in, I took my Dremel, which if you're not familiar with it, it's a little uh, tool to, that has all kinds of tips for it. And one of them is a sanding tip. And I ground off all of those high spots, mixed up more of the epoxy, put them back on the turners, and we did a second cup. And I gotta tell you, the second cup layer makes it look so much better. They were pretty this morning, but they were gonna be pale because they were one layer over white. Second layer, more color, more depth. And the other thing that I was able to do because these turners do change direction, every hour or so, I'd change the direction because then I'd let the epoxy move back the other way. We're at hour, I wanna say, what time is it, 4.30? I probably did these around noon. So we're around four, four and a half hours into this. They are holding up well. The power is holding out, so we haven't had any mishaps. And we're getting a very cool result. And there's some very interesting swirls and stuff that are happening that I'll discuss. I can't show them to you now because I can't take the turners, uh, the cups off the turners, but I'll explain how I got there later on. All right, let me, oh, uh, you zoomed in on me, wow. Nobody needs to see me that close. 
All right, so we are going to now start today's projects. Today's project, projects, project, is a tote bag, okay? We all have tons of beach bags, tote bags like this floating around. I get a bunch of free ones. This one I happened to pick up this morning at the Paper Sources Closeout Sale, and I paid like, I don't know, $3 for it. Very inexpensive. I got two of them so that we could do a project, and then maybe we'll start a different one. Um, so I had a lot of fun this morning figuring out what to do. Now, I'm sure you all have tons and tons of paints floating around, and... I often have this situation where like I've created an outfit for myself or I've created a look and then I need a bag to go with it. Well, you know, I'm, I love the beach. So anything beachy, I'm all about creating. So the first thing I did was I took colors. We're going to do this all in set coat, faux fex set coat. So you don't have to go out and buy special paint for this. So if you have set coat on your shelf or Bondego, or uh, Metal Glow or Modern Masters Metallics, you can do this with all of it. There are tricks to this. So the first thing I did is I did some thin washes on this bag. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Hey, a sorry, Ashley, I'm looking at Lynette and saying hi to Ashley. Sorry, Lynette. All right, so we ne right now we have got, let me see if I can adjust this so you can get a little more view. I have, the bag that I started and then I have this blank bag. So I'm going to show you how I got to this stage and then we'll move on with this bag. So all I did was take a chip brush and let's see, I think I'm going to use a little bit different colors just because I can. I have got about four or five jars of paint sitting around me. Um, and of course, because I'm really, really bad about uh, cleaning off the jar edges of my jars. All my jars get stuck. Hang on, I need a popper here. I need a paint key to open my jar. Um, so be be better at what you do than I do. Don't be cleaning chunks of stuff like this off the edge of your jar. This is my bad. This is probably my worst habit in the studio is that I don't clean off my jars and then I'm always doing stuff like this, just trying to pry the jar open. And I have nobody to blame but myself. Let's see if I can get that open yet. All right, there we go. Coming, coming, coming. Ugh. Wasn't kidding. See how bad that jar edge is? Don't do that to your jars. Be nicer. All right, and I have water. Now you can see this isn't clean water. I was using it on the other bag, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take a little bit, I'm dipping my brush into the lid, why not? Because I can. And then I'm smearing a shape here on my bag. It's very watery. Now, uh, I always recommend washing the size out washing putting things through the wash once before you do anything like this obviously I didn't do that with this bag but I'm making a very 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 watery wash because I want it to penetrate the fibers why because this will actually help um, make this bag a little more water protected if you put enough acrylic product on something it becomes what very quite water resistant so I'm using, this is, I'm using matte metallic uh, set coat in copper. So I'm very, I love this color. I'm using different colors than I used on the other one. The other one we'll discuss when I pull it up. I'll tell you what colors I use. But truly, all I'm doing is uh, thinning down the set coat with water and then I didn't even do anything special to get this to dry. <laughs> I actually hung it on the back door of my studio in the sunlight. Um, I can do that because set coat is interior and exterior rated. And um, it will hold up. The pigments won't fade. And it won't break down. 
So this is actually like a great product to use for this. This is not typical fabric paint. Um, I could use that, yes, but I wanted something that I knew if I was using it for a beach bag, I wanted something I knew would be light fast, meaning it would hold up in sunlight. Um, and if I use a term that somebody doesn't understand, please say there's no, I know this because I had to know it in school. Sometimes I know things just because I had to know them for classes or whatever. So if you don't know what I mean, um, it's not a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. There might be a stupid teacher who doesn't know to explain things, um, meaning me, but uh, no such thing as a stupid question. Um, and light fastness, if you're not familiar with the term, light fastness means the ability for pigments or colorants or whatever you want to call them not to fade in light. Sunlight is the fastest fader. That's really a word. Fastest thing to fade um, pigments. UV is very hard on pigments. So just be aware of that. Okay, cracking open another jar. And this is metallic true silver set coat. And obviously I am not taking, using any special tools. I'm using a chip brush and water. Now, I can, I, I'm being, trying to be careful not to set this down on a damp spot so that uh, I put the wrong color on the back, but it's not a big deal because I'm gonna, eventually I'll paint the back too. I'm only painting one side now to, to show you guys where I'm going with this. But, you know. I'll paint the back too. All right, so we're using metallic true silver. And obviously I'm overlapping my border here so the copper and the silver are gonna meet. And they'll actually bleed into each other a little bit because this is so wet and I'll get a nice soft fade. This is so easy. Hey, David. Hey, Lee. Ashley, thank you. You know, Ashley, I, I'm teaching, showing you guys this on fabric, but you can do this on any surface. Now, it works easily on fabric for me because I'm working really wet and it soaks into the fabric and then it bleeds. But you can do this on Think about doing it as a color wash on top of like our uh, texture medium or any other plaster product and this would work. It'll just soak right in and you'll have nice soft fade. The trick is to stay wet while working. Keep the edges wet. If you need to use a spray gun to help keep things moist. Uh, I was really impressed. These bags for as cheap as they were, and as wet as I'm getting this, it really actually didn't even soak through the canvas. These are a little heavier. There's almost like uh, the kind of canvas used to paint before it's been gessoed. So it held onto the product really nicely without it soaking through even as wet as I'm getting it. And trust me, I got this one just as wet. just as much water on my brushes. I bled just as much colors around each other. All right, so I've got this. I just want to put a little more color in there, I think. So uh, we're going to take our set coat metallic navy. Uh, I could have had all of these opened before I went live, but no, I have to show you just how big a slob I am in the studio. So what I'm doing with this is these jars are plastic and the lids are plastic and I'm just sort of separating the lid from where it's been stuck to the jar with the paint. I'm not trying to crack the lid, although I have done that. 
not very proud of it. It's not one of my better moments, but I have done that. All right, so I'm gonna take a little set coat metallic navy on my brush. Okay, so this is gonna bleed a little bit, especially if I put a little more water on it. And that's exactly what I want it to do. I love how that disperses. It kind of goes like an inky tie-dye thing that I just love. And this will make the bag a little stiff, but not like if I just brushed plain old paint. And why didn't I just brush plain old paint? Oh, it does look a little like a river flowing through a desert. Thank you, Ashley. Um, because if I brushed plain paint on here, it would crack. It's too thick just to brush plain paint on a whole bag. Oh, look, I, I created a little splatter. Well, I better embrace those. And drop some water on those. Um, yeah, I do finger paint like a toddler, so oh well. Right, I'm going to set that to the side. That'll dry. We won't touch that one again today because it's not going to be dry again. All right, let me uh, move some things around. I want to turn the paper over so it's dry that when I set this other bag on it because it's very wet right around here. I have to move some things back. It's amazing how crowded and messy I can make a space in like five minutes. All right, so we're good with that. And of course I just stuck it on the epoxy. So yeah, that's me. I got too many things going on. It happens every single time. Oh well, I'll make the, I'll wipe the epoxy off the other side with some alcohol and then paint over it. It won't show. That's what I do all day, every day is try to figure out how to clean up the things I screw up. All right, give me just a second because I touched epoxy and now my fingers are sticking together. I just need to wipe my fingers off. Okay, so I clean my hands off because I can do that that quickly with a little denatured alcohol. Um, I'm going to flip this around so that you can see I actually touched the epoxy there. That's uh, denatured alcohol here. And I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit. I am kind of shoving it into the fibers. I don't care. Why? Because I'm going to end up coming back and painting this side anyway. I only painted one side. Alright, here's my bag. And let's shift things around so it's centered in the camera lens and you can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so I took some inspiration from an amazing decorative finisher named Celeste Cortez. She does all these wonderful kind of patchworky quilts finishes that are the coolest thing ever. So I thought I'd start with using some of her ideas that I really admire and kind of work around. And I, and I have no idea if this is going to be successful or not. So don't ask me. Um, I'm going to take, this is my, um, I think this is called Ethnic Grid. Uh, I don't name them, so that's why I can never remember. And I'm going to take it and put it down here on the board on the floor. Well, I was going to spray it with adhesive, but my spray... I am just having a day. My sprayer doesn't work. I gotta grab the other bottle. Sorry, folks. Hold it.
have one that works, it's fine. And I don't use any special adhesive. Yep, it does look a little bit. Hi, I'm sorry, Gloria from New York. Oh, my hometown, nice to see you. Actually, yeah, it does look a little like a rock formation. I was sort of going for that. All right. I have sprayed my stencil with a little bit of spray adhesive and I'm gonna set it to the side for a sec because why I need that adhesive to dry. I don't wanna put it right on the surface because if I put it right on the surface, it's gonna leave glue behind. And this is the trick with using spray adhesive and stencils. You don't have to use the repositionable. You just need to let it sit and dry enough so that it's tacky like tape without being gummy like the glue is still wet. That's you set it to the side. And while that sets up and dries, we're gonna take a little bit of paint. We're gonna put a couple paint colors on our tray. Uh, otherwise known in, in very fancy terms as a styrofoam plate. And literally, I just need little tiny bits of the paint, so I'm probably gonna take out way more than I need. So there's that one I used. That's set coat top copper. This is set coat metallic true blue. Sorry, bright blue, which is the color I used here. And we have set coat metallic bronze, which is the color that's actually that brown. Um, you don't have to use metallics. I just happen to be using metallics because I like them. They make me happy. All right, so I've set up my paints here. And now I'm gonna take my grid and this is gonna be sort of random. Put it over here. I gotta place it where I want it, which means I want it placed just slightly over the edge of everything. And I'm gonna take one of my stencil brushes. I carry these stencil brushes. They're from Artistic Painting Studio. They are phenomenal. So I'm gonna start up here like this, and I'm going in circles. I do not have a lot of paint on my brush. Uh, I'm not offloading like I might for a hard surface because the fabric's gonna grab the paint. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of copper over here, and I'm gonna come back in here, swirl up into some of this other shape. Um, and as you notice, I'm going from uh, color to color with the same brush because I'm putting so little paint on here that uh, I don't worry about any color blending or deposits that I don't want. But if I was really concerned, I'd just uh, offload it onto a paper towel like this. I would not wet it, I would not rinse it or do anything else. I just wipe it off this way because once these brushes get wet, you cannot use them again. They just have to be dry. You have to wait until they're dry to use them because the bristles are too soft and then the moisture grabs up under here and you it, paint, it makes your paint really wet and everything puddles up and does very unattractive stuff. And obviously, I'm not even trying to get this on here perfectly. I'm just trying to get um, sort of the idea of this grid on here, and it's gonna fade. And yeah, I'm putting some copper in with the blue. I want it all kind of soft and mushy and squishy together a little bit. pick up my stencil and you see I was playing with all the colors there I had the 
bronze, I had the blue, I had the copper going. I just want a little bit of everything happening here. And then you kind of mush them together and you get some other really cool colors. Okay, that's nice. Right here, I got it a little too wet with and I dipped right into my bronze and yeah, it bled a little bit right there, but that's okay. I can, I'm gonna end up burying it anyway. It always happens. I always get at least one <laughs> aggressive bleed because I'm impatient. Let's get this copper right here. So the texture of the fabric actually helps deposit paint from your brush onto the fabric. Okay, that's good. So we're gonna set that one to the side for now. And you can see now I've got my pattern sort of faded. It's really pretty. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do, which we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna use one of our other new stencils. This is from Renee Holder of Two Chatty Chicks. We now carry these. This is our uh, elephant head. And let's see. I mean, with just two overlays, I could do that. But I actually, I think there will be more stuff happening here. So I think first thing I got to do is put a little spray adhesive on there. Make sure I've got it facing the way I want it. This is very literally a brand new stencil. So I don't know if the caramel will pick up just how that light speckling, that's the adhesive. So there's very little um, adhesive on here. Why? Because I don't want it on here, a lot on here. I don't want it to accidentally deposit on the fabric. And I can see right here, I got a little stenciled edge. Well, you know what? This is why we created layers. Layers will vary things. Okay, we're gonna put that down. This is pretty thoroughly dry. And I think I'm gonna play, <laughs> not that blue. I want dark blue, our dark metallic navy from set coat, and we'll use copper. So I think what I'm gonna do is make sure my brush is offloaded a little bit. I'm gonna dip into the blue swirl it a little on my plate that's this is me shoving it up into the bristles so it grabs and we're going to be playing with all kinds of colors that metallic navy is grabbing up on here really nicely it may just be too much dark blue so i'm pulling out my my metallic snow Dipping in there a little bit, kind of smearing that around. Let's get in here and do all of this and then maybe choose some other colors if I want to. I'll come back in with other colors. If I get this all in in the navy, then I know everything will be visible against my background because it's not a color that's on anything else, anywhere else in here. And if you notice, I'm not scrubbing back and forth, I'm swirling. And I'm actually not putting a whole lot of pressure on here. The swirling motion scrapes the paint out of the bristles and onto your surface and it comes at everything in all directions so you get a more uniform coating. All right, so I've got my whole elephant is kind of stenciled in here in navy. I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna put a little copper in. Maybe I wanna offload my brush a little because I think I'm gonna get too much navy deposited. I 
could always pull another brush out. It's not like I don't have more brushes. This, these are, these stencil brushes I, are from Artistic Painting Studio and I've been using them for years. And I gotta tell you, they're some of the best stencil brushes I've ever used. I don't like the way that's grabbing. I think I've got too much blue in this brush, so I think I'm gonna grab another brush. I don't really want to deposit the copper on there that way. I want to see a little more variation in what I'm doing. I don't want it all to turn into a copper muddy mess with navy blue. I need to have a separate brush because it was all blending on the brush. Um, how do I know where to place the colors? I don't. I just slap it on and hope for the best. really honest with everybody I just do it until it looks right how this is the question I get have been asked all of my life how do you know when you're done you just look at it and you know it's done there's no other way to explain that to somebody um, if it looks complete to you then it is then you've done it and it's ready to go sometimes it's not Sometimes it takes more. I'm going to put more blue over here. A little muddy on the colors, so I just want to lighten them up a little bit. If I, like I said before, if I wanted to, I'll just take a smaller brush. I can come in. This is almost dry paint. That's why I'm dipping in it right out of the jar. Uh, I'm using the very last of this jar to accomplish other things. I can come in with a little white. just in a little bit of other color. It's gonna lo all looks really bad until you lift the stencil. And the thing is I have to make sure not to get too much white up here because this is my white area. So if I'm gonna put some white on things, I want it where it's gonna contrast more and really enhance my image. So I'm trying to make sure that where I'm putting it it will look good. All right, let's pull this back and see how good or bad I did. Eh, not too bad. Had a couple bleeds where I didn't, I didn't listen to myself. I like how this came out. So here's my elephant. So far, here's my elephant. So I'm very happy. This I could leave alone, but I may patch in some more colors layer over a little more stencil, maybe put even on another elephant, but look how cute that is. Okay, that was... Oh, Ashley, you never believe your work is done. Um, I don't either, so I believe my work is done when I'm sick of it. But, I mean, look how cute this is for a tote bag already. And it's got its bleeds, and it's got its mistakes, and you can't see it, I'm not going to be an idiot and zoom in on it in the camera so you can all see just how badly I bled some of these places. But now when I, this one's dry, this one is not dry, it's still very damp. If you look, I'm bringing up paint on my fingers. But this is how we get there. So for Thrifty Thursday, you can create with a stencil, whatever paints are on your shelves, and a cheap tote bag. You can create the most stunning bags. Do not ever think that what you are going to create has to be the most expensive thing. You don't have to use the most expensive products. You have to use them right, but you don't have to use the most expensive ones. For example, you saw I saturated the bag with a watery combination of this before I put regular paint on. Why? Because I know that will keep the paint that I apply over it from cracking. 
I needed to create a bonding layer that would be so that when I put stuff in the bag, the paint just doesn't crack and flip off. That's what that did. You call Bleed's character. Oh God, I love you, Ashley. I, I need more people telling me my mistakes are character. Well, I've been calling myself a character. I don't want to end up in the wrong just definition for myself either. <laughs> All right, everybody. This was a fairly short one today, so I appreciate you sticking around. If you have any questions about how I did something, what the stencil was, what products were, I will post the products and everything in the, the header for the post like I always do, but don't hesitate to ask a question. And if I missed your question doing the live, because I'm looking down, not looking at the camera, don't worry, I'll come back. I'll look at it, I'll answer the questions, I'll type the answers. Even if I answered your question while I was talking, I will still write it out because I know sometimes it's easier to come back and find um, the answer when it's written down instead of having to scroll through the video. So I hope you all have a fab Thursday. We're going to be back tomorrow with Free Finish Friday. Don't miss it. I will do a complete finish for you and Ashley will tell you, cause she's been a student in several of my classes. My finishes sell. I like to make things that are forgiving, sellable, and fairly easy to accomplish. I don't, I don't think the finishes should be so hard that um, you look at it and go, God, I have to do that finish. No, you want something that is really, really doable. All right, everybody. Sorry, I'm putting lids on jars, you know, hoping for the best, seeing how much I'll get them stuck together again before I go live again tomorrow. Anyway, have a great one, everyone. By the way, Sprinkle, we're going to be announcing a contest that counts on sprinkling the love tomorrow during Free Finish Friday. So do not miss the contest announcement. Get used to using that little arrow button and let's see what we can work out for everybody. I'll talk to you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye.